Hi, welcome to Cold Fighter Class with Master Hun. This is episode four, season zero, and today's episode is titled Why Coding? Why should your kids learn to code? Okay, before uh, I start I start the episode, just want to let everyone know that this is I'm recording this in the month of October 2019 and this is the 16th October uh, 16th year of National Cybersecurity Awareness Month and I just want to quickly let you know that there is a lot of lot of very good free online resources tips tricks how to's available online and that you can and I want to direct you to a website legitimate website um, created by professionals in the industry in the tech industry just for not only for big businesses and huge corporations but also small to middle to mid-sized businesses and also for private citizens and it's actually in several different languages but this website that I'm going to highlight here is staysafeonline.org and it will it provides a lot of free resources for for the individual person small to medium sized businesses and of course large corporations so i highly recommend that you go there and and uh, learn about cybersecurity because the only person responsible for your safety online is you and also just want to quickly remind you that this is we are in the we are in the holiday season now the so we will 2020 is coming quickly please 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 do not keep using the same passwords year after year especially especially for your accounts your financial accounts and any accounts any online accounts that are important to you please at least once a year this this quarter quarter four q4 please change your passwords change your passwords if you have we have been using the same password please use unique passwords if you have been using very short passwords please make them longer and please learn what a weak password is versus a strong password again please change your passwords make 2020 uh, make sure that you stay remain safe online safe online protect your identity protect your business protect your company okay so again um, again just go go to this website here staysafeonline.org and it will have tons of information for you practical information that you can use okay also i want to before i get into the meat of the program i want to uh, let you know that this is uh, this is a free coding online coding course available to available uh, available on the web as a web app also available as a free app no ads no no ads on ios and android only requires you to have a google account to to use this app it's called grasshopper and it mainly teaches it, it does teaches is focused on teaching coding concepts for the beginner it, the language it uses is javascript which is a very popular coding language and it's very easy to accessible to most people it does not require you to buy any software it's all so anybody who has a modern who has an, a relatively recent desktop or laptop would have will have all the software available already installed on their laptop or desktop so they can start coding in javascript so i just want to show you uh, okay so 
So the website is okay. So the website is learn.grasshopper.app. Okay. And it has it has again teaches base it teaches basic coding fundamental coding concepts and and will teach you uh, JavaScript not only JavaScript but also HTML HTML and CSS and you get you started on not only learning coding concepts but also get you started on learning web development okay and again it is free uh, there are no ads only requires you to have a Google account which most people do okay so I've been I played around with it yesterday and it's not perfect but but it is I think I think it is definitely it's a good way to start uh, not only for kids and adults it's a good way, place to start to learn to code does not, for free and it's very convenient because because it's all online again you could do it on your on a, you can there's an iPhone app and an Android app available and also you can use it on your laptop or desktop as a web app so please check it out grasshopper learn 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 dot grasshopper dot app Okay, please check it out. Okay, so so let let's start. Okay, so let's get started on the meat of this episode. Why coding? Why why coding? Why should your child or children learn to code? And of course, obviously you want if i have no kids of my own but if you are a parent if you want you probably want your child or children to learn to code because you want them to be prepared for the uh, before for a future for future the future job market which will be even more tech oriented than it is now so obviously learning to code would be uh, may not just be may not be ju only an advantage. It may just literally be a requirement. Many many jobs in the future, maybe more than half, maybe seventy percent, will require you to know how to code. And so, if you do not know how to code, then obviously, then those jobs are then you are locked out of those jobs, or it will, or you will have to. Or, or you will have to take extra time just to learn some basic coding so you can even apply for these jobs. So let's talk about so let's talk about the current state of computer science education. And currently, I live in California, and so let's talk about California. So computer science education for K to 12 in California so okay so why coding um, why would you why would you if you are an adult who's interested in in uh, the coding for kids market if you're interested in in a business in a coding for kid coding for kids CFK business product or service there's a lot of good news for you because the major, vast majority of parents parents want their want their children to learn to code okay uh, the source the source of this uh, all these stats are from code.org. Okay, so if you go to code.org, 
you can yourself see download the this uh, PDF with uh, with statistics for all, all the state all 50 states I'm sorry may may not be all 50 states but the def I know definitely they have one for California and New York State okay so the national statistics are quite clear 93% of parents want their child's school to teach computer science and or and or coding but only 45% of high schools teach it 75% 75% Americans believe computer science is a cool is cool in a way it wasn't 10 years ago half of Americans rank computer science as one of the two most important subjects of study after reading and writing 67% of parents and 56% of teachers believe students students should be required to learn computer science Students who learn computer science in high school are six times more likely to major in it, and women are ten times more likely. Okay. In California, currently, more than six, 67,000 computing jobs are still open. 3.3 times the average demand rate in California compared to other jobs, non-computing jobs. The average salary for a computing job in California is, whoa, it's 112, more, little about around 112, 112K a year. That's not bad, considering the average salary in California is around, is, is around 57K a year. That's not a bad deal. Okay. California, but although there are although there are sixty seven more than sixty seven thousand open computing jobs in California, California had only around six thousand computer science graduates in two thousand seventeen. In California, only 47% of all public high schools teach computer science. And let's just skip to the bottom. This is really interesting. In 2016, in the state of California, not one single not one new teacher graduated from a California University prepared to teach computer science Wow Wow that's that's hard to believe right not one <laughs> not one Yeah, it's quite, there's a quite, uh, there's a contrast here, right? 90% of parents want their child to study computer science, but only 45% of high schools teach computer science. So there's definitely demand and there's not enough supply. So I think, so I think it's pretty clear the statistics, this, not just in California, of course, it's nationally, the statistics will clearly indicate that there's definitely demand if you are interested in in teaching K KFC compute coding for kids or creating a product or service or business definitely there is a demand and I believe and I believe next year in 2020 the demand will will grow even stronger if we look at uh, code ninjas the franchise and their their growth currently uh, if you go to their website if you go to their website and just search on locations 
Okay. Okay, if you go to codeninjas.com and uh, search on the on their locations. I'm not getting it. Okay. Okay, I'm okay. So as you can see, uh, they started in the first Code Ninjas franchise, opened in 2017, and this is the year 2019. And in a relatively short, very very short years, in about two years, two three years, they have already sold. Uh, they have already have sold 433 territories. Because each center is uh, is its own little is its own territory, and they're already in, in the United States. They're already in 44 states. So Code Ninjas, if you look at Code Ninjas and what they've been able to do, the co and considering considering their their are private their private after school program, there's definitely a demand, huge demand in uh, not just in the United States, but I think globally there is a huge demand for uh, so the CFK coding for kids market is huge and just in where I live in Southern California there are lots of code ninjas that are that are opening up there are a lot of code ninjas opening up near me and I believe next year there will be even more so where I live here, I live in uh, near Buena Park in Fullerton, and there's a Code Ninjas in uh, this this one. There's a Code Ninjas that will be opening at Fullerton. There's a Code Ninjas in Cerritos. There's a Code Ninjas in Cypress, in Garden Grove, and I know that there are there are two in Irvine. And oh yes, there's no one in uh, Chino Hills. Uh, so yeah, so I think uh, we haven't, and this is not even it. I think there there's more Code Ninjas to come. So I think Code Ninjas has 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 grown so fast because there's a huge demand. Uh, households, families in in the United States, they want their kids to learn. Uh, they want their kids to learn coding and computer science so there's a huge demand so definitely why why parents want their kids to learn to code and why and why you would be interested in in if you in offering in getting into the coding for kids sector uh, industry it's there's a lot of growth there's a lot of lot of growth into it and then that's why I'm trying to that's why that is what I'm trying to uh, capitalize on I'm trying to be trying to position myself as a coding for kids America's number one coding for kids expert self-proclaimed and I'm trying to be up to date with what's going on in my industry I am a coding for kids instructor. That is how I make the little bit of living that I, I mean, I do, that's what I do. Uh, I teach at Rolling Hills Estates. I teach in Fullerton. I teach in Brea uh, in Southern California. And I believe, especially in California, because Silicon Valley and the Bay Area are here. So I believe, in, but definitely in California. There's a definitely there is a there is a huge demand, not only in terms of computing jobs, but also a huge there will be there will be continue to be a huge demand for CFK coding for kids. So I that's the why.
Now the thing, uh, the thing I next I want to talk about is currently I'm focusing, I'm focusing on my classes. My what I teach is primarily I teach Python. I teach the Python language, and that's primarily the the biggest difference between me and Code Ninjas. Although Code Ninjas does offer, they do offer Python as a workshop, as workshops and seminars. Their tech stack, as far as I as as far as I know, their curriculum is based on a tech stack of of uh, first they start off with uh, st scratch then to javascript then lua and then c sharp and they do offer other they do offer other tech subjects coding subjects but they offer it as a workshop or as seminars so i think they would be they would do that for like a day or for maybe a week but it's not part of their primary curriculum. But as they would like to point out that the language is not that important, coding concepts are important because coding coding languages do go rise and fall all the time. So I would agree with that. I currently do focus on teaching Python. Of all the coding languages available, most parents, most parents who have no coding background whatsoever, coding or computer science background whatsoever, I mean, they, they know, they've heard of Python, so they're more aware of Python than other languages. So that's that's uh, that's a that's a that's a good reason why you'd want to to teach. Why do you want to teach? Learn Python yourself and teach Python. Uh, in your coding CFK coding for kids class I think Python has a lot of advantages I think you can I think you can teach Python to even young kids it's an easy language to learn for both for children and adults and I think the possibility of what you can do with it as you learn more Python as you learn more concept coding concepts and get more into the language, I think you can do more and more interesting and more advanced projects. So that's the reason I like Python. And there's a lot of free online resources for Python to learn Python and to actually to code in Python. So the and plus the software, uh, if you go to if you go to python.org. The software is available for free to download. They have versions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Right, so this is the python.org, the mothership I call it, where you can download the latest version of Python, Python 3.x, whatever that rec recent uh, new version of Python 3 is. Uh, just want to note, just caution you that I'm not, I'm not. I'm not promoting, I'm not uh, telling you to install Python on your desktop or laptop. I'm not, I'm not suggesting it. I'm just telling you for information purposes where it is if you are interested in doing so. If you do install Python on your desktop and lap or laptop and it bombs your machine, I do not provide any free technical support. That you, technical support is something you would have to pay for. I do not do that. <laughs> If you want to pay me to give you provide technical support for you that's great otherwise check out whatever lo local tech support shops are available to you okay again I'm not I'm just telling you where you can go to potentially download Python but I'm not telling you to download and install Python on your desktop or laptop and you don't need to actually in the beginning you do not need to install Python on your desktop or laptop because you can go you can because you can experiment and start to learn Python for example you could do it for free on solo learn solo learn solo learn.com 
It does require registration, but you do not have to pay anything. You do not have to give them your credit card. So you can go to uh, sololearn.com and take their Python tutorial free. It's a free tutorial. Only requires registration. And you can, they also have a, what they call the code playground where you can code in Python and in many other coding languages. There's a whole bunch of them. Let's see, you can do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you can do C++, you can do C, you can do C Sharp, you can do Java, you can do Python, you can do PHP, you can do Ruby, you can do Kotlin, you can do Swift. There's a, well, there's a whole bunch of coding languages that you can practice. Okay, so for example, this is my password generator, Mark 1, and I can, it's running, okay, it's running already. It's running in the cloud. Nothing is installed on your computer. It all runs. You access the the Python Python software on their uh, web servers. Okay, it's running. I'm just running right now. Okay. Also, there is also a website that I use is PythonTutor.com. Also use PythonTutor.com, and you can you can start to you can uh, edit code and run code Python code. For example, okay. for example, I'll show you quickly here. I wrote two lines of code. I created a variable x. I gave it the value five, the whole number, the integer five, and then I'm Outputting or displaying the what's the value that's inside the variable variable x, and I can step through each line. I created the variable, the box named x, holds the value of five, the integer five, and oh, I look what I did. I outputted the value to the console here, to the output area. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, so you can. We live in amazing times. You can, you can, uh, you can learn to code for free online. Very convenient. Not only on a desktop or as a web app, desktop or laptop as a web app, but also uh, you can uh, just like uh, Grasshopper. You can, you can uh, download an I iPhone app or a, or an Android app. A solo learn uh, Android or iPhone app and you can actually code and learn Python and other coding languages uh, on your phone so we live in amazing times you can learn to code for free on your phone okay finally okay here right so in this area in this area here I'm sorry, let me change it, okay. In this area here, you uh, edit your Python code and then, then if there's output, usually there's output, and then you can see the output over here on this side, it's the output screen. Okay, you can save your code, you can run your code, okay, you can even uh, change it from dark, you have a dark mode and a light mode, Okay, and again, you can code in different languages. And okay, so I'm taking a lot of time. So just want to finish up by just uh, promoting myself and my Code Fighters quiz cards project. And why, why, why would you, why do I think you should take a look at code fighters quiz cards so the one thing that the big plus is that I will be making available I'm already doing it now the videos and teaching you about code fighters quiz cards I'm doing coding tutorials I'm making it all available for free on YouTube I will I'm slowly making the quiz cards and the quiz sheets available on my website 
Again, it will be free for parents, teachers, students to download and print. I will, the, the videos will be free. The quiz cards will be, will, you will be able to download and print for free. Quiz sheets, I will have quiz sheets you can download and print for free. And I will have lesson plans and worksheets that you can download and print for free. So that's a big plus. There's, it will be uh, that a lot of most of most of it will be most of it will be available for free. The other the other second I want to mention that the the ultimate goal of Code Fighters quiz cards is and it doesn't happen right away. It takes some time, of course. Is that it's a it is a competitive one on one coding card game and the ultimate goal is to is not to just teach only coding to kids and adults uh, but it is all teach kids to generate their own code so so I the point is to create a virtuous cycle where children learn kids learn coding concepts which will help them to make their own DIY, make their own quiz cards and quiz sheets, which they will use to in matches against other code fighters. And as they and as they learn more coding concepts, it helps them to make better and better quiz cards and quiz sheets, which will help them to win more matches which will motivate them to learn more advanced and more coding concepts, which will hopefully result in them making stronger quiz cards and quiz sheets, which help them to win more matches, which will motivate them to, to, motivate them to learn more coding, more coding concepts and more advanced coding concepts. And also, I have I've already started uh, introducing many gaming gamification many, many gamification bells and whistles levels so i have a level none i have a level zero i have a level one and and i will have i'm planning on having a level two and a level three i have already several badges so that the code fighters can earn badges and also have also have also have started to uh, hand out and hand out uh, what I call special power cards, which are essentially consumables, which can only be used once, and they expire after use. And the idea of that is to create a reward and prize reward and prizes that. Are sustainable because you because they can be created at will by the by the code sensei or the code fighters sent the code fighter sensei or the referee or the trainers or the parents who who is who is implementing the uh, the code fighters quiz cards matches and tournaments so so that's what I'm working on. Oh, of course, the ultimate for the if you decide to if you decide to implement Code Fighters, if you want to do Code Fighters quiz card.